Farish Mamun. Thank you so much for giving us time in Delhi. If you want to just go back a little bit in history and explain both your father, ex-president Gayoom, and your moving away from ex-president Yamin and a supporting president Sori. Uh, thank you for the for this opportunity, and uh, it's very nice to be here in Delhi. Uh, this is a city I love, and it's, uh, I feel at home in this country. So thank you very much. Um, going back to uh, what happened in. 2015, 2016, around that time, uh, it was very difficult for us. It was a situation where we found um, that our party, PPM, was being taken in a direction policy-wise that my father, in his policies throughout his uh, career, political career, and by and large, uh, our constitution and our laws did not allow. Uh, we tried to reason with, with uh, President Yamin. Uh, most of this happened uh, behind closed doors, that uh, what we stood for, what we were trying to achieve in the Maldives uh, was at a tangent to what was happening then. Um, we had some discussions initially. We made clear that uh, the path being taken, and by, by that I, I mean not just simple political issues, but major issues like um, things like um, interference with, within the judiciary, uh, major allegations of corruption, um, these issues that we were not going to be part of. So eventually it came to a split simply because our voice wasn't heard. And um, it is unfortunate, regrettable, but uh, for us, uh, especially as I was a member of parliament at that time, I had a sworn oath of office, I had to keep by that. And it came to a point where we could not go along with what was happening. So the move away was uh, unfortunate, but we had to take it uh, as a matter of principle. Um, subsequently, there were a lot of things we had to go through. Uh, but since when it, when it came round to the 2018 elections, we had to find a solution to move on. We, we, we supported the democratic process all along. So when we moved away from the government at the time, we had no idea where our support was going to be, whether we would come out independently for the 2018 elections. But it came to pass that the best solution was President Sole. And I had worked with President Sole in, in Parliament, and he was someone I could trust and I had full confidence in. So we didn't hesitate at all in pledging our support to President Sole. And I think uh, as we stand now, uh, we are very, very uh, pleased with, with uh, our decisions in, in that time. We had to go through some things, but. Ultimately, I think it was a correct decision for our part. Some of these things include uh, you resigning as a minister in the Yamin government. Uh, both your father and you were imprisoned for over a year as well. Uh, I myself, I was a uh, minister for state and I resigned my position because I ran for parliament in a by-election. And that was not to do with uh, the politics. It was to do with uh, having a better say and trying to contribute more because uh, I felt that I hadn't been able to contribute as Minister of State as I desired. So uh, in Parliament and then the move away came uh, inside Parliament when certain amendments, certain new legislations. Yes, uh, you mentioned uh, incarceration, imprisonment, uh, there were fake charges brought against us. Uh, these were created, fabricated, uh, political, mo politically motivated, as has been subsequently proven in, in the courts of appeal. And these were targeted against dissidents, what uh, the government saw as uh, people that they would like out of the political picture. But I think that backfired in large part because uh, my father, especially, he was very steadfast in, in his beliefs, even though he was over eight years old. Uh, he he went through that, he suffered through that trauma. I think he was in prison for about eight months. Um, and he never relented. There were offers made, there were threats made 
but uh, he, he didn't flinch. And I, I think uh, that uh, alone proves what my father feels for the country. So uh, again, our beliefs, our principles, we always believed what we were doing was the correct thing. And that's what, what kept us on, on that path. You mentioning the the judiciary there and false charges, fabricated charges, which are subsequently proven in various levels of court, including the Supreme Court for both you, your father, you, and many other uh, MPs and, and judges and even police commissioners, etc. Uh, the Mormon Reform Movement became a party as the Maldivian Reform Party and was recognized as a national party in November 2018. You're looking now to enlarge your base to maybe 10,000 people who are part of the whole party itself. But the MRM has also said that ex-president Yamin should not be given bail, for instance, because there are other cases against him. Uh, he could misuse his power to influence witnesses or evidence. But the PPM would say now the boots on the other foot, that they have fabricated charges against him uh, and uh, courts only deal with uh, the government in power, so as to speak, or they rule only in favor of the government in power. There is a problem within the judiciary that is being trying to, uh, festering for a long time in the Maldives. Yes, yes, uh, we, we do believe that is true. Uh, uh, the judiciary needs reform. I think we have made uh, very good moves in that direction, but it still needs time. Um, uh, with regards to what you said about MRM's position regarding uh, President Yamin's bail, I don't think that is the official position of the party. We have members who will obviously voice out their own positions. Uh, Seeing a member, I think the, the secretary uh, uh, was quoted uh, on th TV. That, maybe, that, that TV might TV. be, but we have had no discussions in, in our executive committee. Uh, what we believe is that every individual, every citizen should have the same rights. If uh, we were granted bail, then President Yamin at least should be able to hear his case on bail. Um, also during his, his, this is again my own personal view, uh, there were things that happened during President Yamin's case that I myself found difficult to, to uh, acknowledge. Uh, it kind of seemed uh, certain things were still the same as two years ago. So we did indeed make issues out of that, that we we stated that more needs to be done to gain public confidence that this was a fair trial. And there were things that, uh, again, that was highly questionable. And, I, and he the has... The judge a, changed last minute. The judge changed last <clears throat> minute, that, that the public lost a bit of confidence, trust in the process. So. I think, uh, again... Uh, so, would it be fair to say that uh, you would want the process of law to go through? Uh, it shouldn't be seen as a witch hunt, but if someone is proven guilty, they should face the consequences. Is that the position? Absolutely. Our position is that uh, there are things that we believe, serious allegations, that there are cases that need to be answered. But the process has to be fair. Uh, simply because someone has a conviction does not mean that the process was fair, uh, but I do believe it was much better than previous uh, months and years and previous cases, but still there was something to be desired and I, I hope that he gets a, a, a fair hearing, a fair appeal in, 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 in the higher courts. When you talk about positions uh, that various governments and political parties have taken, the India-China question has always come up. Now, President Yamin has been accused of, uh, you know, doing a U-turn on, on in India-Maldives relations and causing up too much to the Chinese, which has now subsequently been reversed. How do you see that whole India-China uh, power rivalry in the Maldives really playing out? Uh, being a very small nation, uh, I think it is highly problematic for us. It, it's a very complex issue for us. And what tends to happen in, in the heat of battle in politics is that things get simplified so that we find that political parties have to having to choose between one or the other external player, which is, uh, in one sense, it is not good for the population, it is not good for the country. Uh, 
Uh, we have had long-standing relations with India. India is geographically our neighbor. We have cultural links. We have long-standing historical links with India. So that is undeniable. And at the same time, China is a growing power. They have a lot of state finance, and there's a lot of uh, investment and development that can be brought mm. with uh, Chinese uh, assistance and cooperation with China. So I don't believe it has to be one or the other. Strategically, one partner may be more important for us, as I mentioned. But uh, I think we need to find ways of cultivating all our partners together and finding a space where we can coexist with all the major players in the region and globally. And I think that has been done before and that can be done again. Vis-a-vis -vis New Delhi's concerns, would you still say that the Maldives needs to keep India first as far as security cooperation goes and when it comes to economic development, um, aid in, in both bringing up the tourism industry or other industries, fisheries or uh, helping in development, then both can be equally partnered or do you think China has a security angle as well to play in the Maldives or should have? I think New Delhi's concerns are very valid that um, strategically Maldives is in a location that is very important to India. So I think as far as security is concerned, India has a bigger role, has a bigger say. But at the same time, I think our, our population are very aware of, of things that might infringe upon our sovereignty. But I, I think there's middle ground to be found there. And at the same time, we can cooperate uh, in trade and commerce and in other, other ways with other countries, China included, the USA and other big players as well. I don't think, I don't see our existence, our international position to be a zero-sum game. It could be a win-win for everybody. It could be. Saying. It should be. I think. Should yes. be one. Well, when you look at what happened in Sri Lanka after the Easter bombings, there was even more of a focus on religious extremism, especially in the Maldives. There were concerns of uninhabited islands being used, say, for another Mumbai-style attack on India or within the Maldives itself. The differences between the Yamin government and the Soli government in terms of transparency, of accepting the fact that there is a problem, police commissioner even coming out and giving numbers that there are probably around 1400 individual extremists who are willing to kill in the Maldives, talking about a 2017 uh, pl bomb plan that had been thwarted. There are being moves by this government in various facets to, to try and deal with this issue within the country and the Maldivians who have gone out to join extremist groups? Well, I think uh, the first thing we had to do was acknowledge that we had a problem. And for years we were in denial. I think President Sol is, uh, is, is highly commendable for stating that fact. And that has been obvious for us, for a lot of observers, for many years now. So I think that's a step in the right direction. The police and the security authorities have identified uh, specific cases, specific networks, and they're dealing with it. And I, I am very, very hopeful that this is the correct path, that m a lot more remains to be done, and we need to be aware of reactions to these actions. Uh, but I think we are headed in the right direction, and I hope and I believe that what occurred in, in Sri Lanka mm. is not replicated in the Maldives, and I don't feel that the conditions are there for a replication, because we're a much more unified society, even though there may be uh, political divides, even uh, differences in how people interpret uh, Islam. We are still basically one country, very one very small country, with very few people, and we feel our, our togetherness more than the things that are trying to drive us apart. When you're talking about togetherness here with the, the Soli government now, you have about four ministers in the cabinet as well. The MRM, what is it looking forward in the future as a political movement? Uh, President, ex-president uh, Kayum, would he want to step back from politics and leave it to the younger generation? Is he satisfied with the, uh, some kind of stability being reached in the democratic process in the Maldives? I think our main aim was to bring stability and to ensure that democratic norms are followed, that the citizens get their fundamental rights. I think politics can only come after that. 
for now, we're just very steadfast in supporting President Soli, uh, trying to assist him and support him as best as we can. Uh, we do not have any vision per se for MRM f with regards to that, but we do believe that there exists a, a portion, a, a sizable portion of, of Maldivian society that would want alternatives. Hmm. Right now we're bordering on not having a valid opposition. I think that's not healthy longer term. Be not an opposition, we, we may come to the point that we are an alternative so that uh, the citizens, when it comes time to vote, we, we, ha we have the local council elections coming up in a few months' time. We'll have, hopefully, our own candidates so that citizens get a choice between different candidates, between different political viewpoints, parties, so we, we can contribute that way. But it happens in many countries, and including in India, that a, a political family is divided in different political groups. And that's precisely what's happened to your family. Of course, uh, President Gayum heads, heads the MRM. You're an executive council member. Yumna is a, a member of the cabinet. Dunya is on an international fellowship. Ghassan, your younger brother, is with the PPM, the opposition. Now, how does that really sit as a family and politics? Can you not discuss politics on the dinner table? Well, we do discuss <laughs> politics. We try and discuss politics, but that discussion doesn't uh, last very long. <laughs> We are, we are very close as a family, still remain very close and we are very thankful for that. And I think our political views will not never come in, in the middle of, of family. Um, it may be strange f for some observers, but even people looking in, in Maldives, mm. I, I, I can tell you that each family mm. is in a similar situation, although we might have people in positions uh, of, of, of leadership, uh, I think this is common for all families in the Maldives and it's a sign of maturity that we are able to have different points of view politically but still coexist as families, as a society. And having said that, I, I, I fail to comprehend the viewpoints of, of some of my siblings, but I have to make clear that MRM is very clear. MRM is with the government, is supporting President Sole. Uh, the views expressed by some of my other siblings, uh, they do not represent MRM in any way. Rajesh Mahmood, thank you so much for speaking to us in Delhi and we hope to see you in Amale soon. Yeah, thank you very much. I wish you good luck.